Hello everyone, this is Southern Bell Whisper. I hope you all are doing well today. It is time for our weekly top 10. I can't believe it's already been a week since my last top 10. That's crazy to me. There is going to be some white noise in this video. I know some people have said they prefer the white noise, but uh, I have my air conditioner on. It's really warm today, and if I don't have it on, I'm going to start sweating, and I don't want to sweat on camera, so. But today, this top 10 was inspired. I finished, I binge watched Bridgerton the other day, the third season, part one, and spoiler alert, there was a declaration of love at the end of part one, so spoiler alert, but it made me think I should do a top ten of my favorite declarations of love, so that is going to be my top so we're going to go ahead and get started. Spoiler alert. The first one is the speech from that last episode that I've rewound and watched about a million times. I'm exaggerating, but it feels like a million times. I wrote everything down on a notebook so I wouldn't forget certain words or whatever. Okay. He said, Colin Richardson said, I have spent so long trying to feel less, trying to be the kind of man society expects me to be. And for a moment, I thought I had succeeded. But these past few weeks have been full of unfounding feelings. Feelings like a total inability to stop thinking about you, about that kiss. Feelings like dreaming of you when I'm asleep, and in fact, preferring sleep because that is where I might find you. A feeling that is like torture, but one which I cannot, will not, do not want to give up. Oh my gosh. That's probably my favorite uh, speech from all the seasons. I love Colin Richardson. That glow up though, oh my god. I was like, hold up. <laughs> I had to pause it for a second. I was like, damn, he looks good. He was can't wait for part two, by the way. Like, they left it on such a cliffhanger. That I'm like, Shonda Rhimes, what are you doing? Okay. Number two is, I love that you get cold when it's 71 degrees out. I love that it takes you an hour and a half to order a sandwich. I love that you get a little crinkle above your nose when you're looking at me like I'm nuts. I love that after I spend the day with you, I can still smell your perfume on my clothes. And I love that you're the last person I want to talk to before I go to sleep at night. And it's not because I'm lonely, and it's not because it's New Year's Eve. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with someone, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. And Harry said that, and when Harry met Sally, I love that one. And then she says what she says. She said, you see, that's just like you, Harry. You say things like that and you make it impossible for me to hate you. I love that. Number three is one of the shorter love declarations, but I love it. Uh, I was a gleek back in the day. And... Rachel and Finn, they're uh, behind the curtain about to go out and sing Faithfully by Journey together. And Rachel says, break a leg. And Finn goes, I love you. When Corey Monteith passed away, mm -mm -mm, I cried for weeks, months, years. And then I also love, uh, from in, as good as it gets, I love, you make me want to be a better man. And I know it's just one sentence, but considering what kind of man he was in that movie, Jack Nicholson, um, it speaks volumes. 
Number four is, I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. I hate your big dumb combat boots and the way you read my mind. I hate you so much it makes me sick. It even makes me rhyme. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh, even worse when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact you didn't call. But mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close, not even a little bit, not even at all. That was uh, Kat Stafford in 10 Things I Hate About You, the ending uh, where she is just found out that she was a bet between Patrick and, and Joey. But by that point, Patrick had already fallen in love with her. And she's pretty much saying in, in this poem that she hates that she loves him. And I love that. The look on Patrick's face after she was done. And I love that was improvised. When she starts crying, she really did, st Julia Stiles, really start crying on that part when she gets to the end of that poem. And I love that. Oh, this is one of my all-time favorites. If your feelings are still what they were last April, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes have not changed, but one word from you will silence me forever. If, however, your feelings have changed, I will have to tell you, you have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love, I love, I love you. I never wish to be parted, from you from this day on. That was Mr. Darcy, Pride and Prejudice. Oh, I'm a big fan, Mr. Darcy. I think I've told you guys that before. <laughs> Number six is, what I'm trying to say very inarticulately is that, um, in fact, perhaps, despite appearances, I like you very much. No, I like you very much, just as you are. That's Mark Darcy from uh, Bridget Jones. I know that's a short one, but I thought it was so cute how nervous he was to tell her how much he liked her. <laughs> Number seven. I am in love with you. You heard me. I'm in love with you. And I know that love is just a shout into the void, and that oblivion is inevitable, and that we are all doomed, and that one day all our labors will be returned to dust, and I know the sun will swallow the only earth we will ever have, and I am in love with you. Sorry. That's Augustus Waters from The Fault in Our Stars. Now, I know I saw that movie on my honeymoon, uh, but I read the book about six times. It's one of my favorite books, and that speech just, I think them casting um, Ansel Alcourt as Augustus Waters was genius. He did so good in that movie. I need to watch it again. I've watched so many movies since I've been here that I watched with my ex, and it's kind of like a new start, you know? It kind of wipes clean all the memories of watching it with him, and that's one of the movies that I need to watch uh, soon. Oh. Number eight is, okay, here it is. Your choice, it's simple her or me, and I'm sure she's really great, but Derek, I love you, in a really, really big, pretend to like your taste of music, let you eat the last piece of cheesecake, hold a radio over my head, outside your window, unfortunately, that makes me hate you, love you, so pick me, choose me, love me, that was Meredith Grey when uh, in the first season, when she, uh, Derek is trying to pick between her and Addison, and she makes this speech. It was perfect. I also really love the Lexi 
declaration of love where it came to Mark. She was like, I love you. And she's like, that just came out of my mouth. I love you. And she just kept saying she loved him. And then Shauna Rhimes ripped our freaking hearts out by killing them both in the next few episodes. Like, when they died and they didn't get to have their happily ever after and Mark had to tell her that he loved her while she was dying. Oh my gosh. Whew. It's genius, but it's also damn you, Chanda Rhymes. <laughs> Number nine is our little project, our company, had a big night. A very, very big night. But it wasn't complete. It wasn't nearly close to be in the same vicinity as complete because I couldn't share it with you. I couldn't hear your voice or laugh about it with you. I miss, I miss my wife. We live in a cynical world, a cynical world, and we work in a business with tough competitors. I love you, you, complete. I love that, uh, and that's from Jerry Maguire, I love that in the middle of the speech, he's just so used to giving speeches where he gets anything he wants, he's not used to telling a woman how much he loves her, so like when he talks about the cynical world and um, the business and everything, it's just him doing what he's used to doing, and then finally he's just like, I love you, you And then she says that line, shut up, just shut up, you had me at low. In which Kenny Chesney had a country song called, You Had Me at Hello. And she, Renee Zellweger, ended up being married to him for like six weeks. Number 10 is one of my favorite scri scriptures in the Bible, but it was also... Um, talked about in A Walk to Remember. So, that is my number 10. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. and does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's shortcomings, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. I'm sorry, it's just when I got here and uh, I was watching a, a walk to remember and I was hearing this quote again, I was like, my marriage was full of not being patient, not being kind, not being jealous, or being jealous. It was boastful, it was conceited, it was rude, and it was selfish. It did take offense, and it was resentful at times. He did take pleasure in my shortcomings. I just, I heard it for the first time when I moved back here and I was like, it should have been a red flag. Knowing that my pastor at the time said that at my wedding and he was all those things, all those red flags. He never went by the, by that quote. It's been one of my favorite quotes for years. I know God still loves me. I know God doesn't like divorce. But you can only let somebody hurt you a, a certain amount of times before you're like, you give in. You're like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done having faith in something that's draining me, you know? 
so, but anyways, that was my top 10 declarations of love. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and please remember to leave down in the comments what you would like my next top 10 to be. I love you guys. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.